Parce que chaque semaine qui commence est un nouveau départ, j'avais envie de vous dire une histoire. Alors je vous propose le bijou, comme un bisou. Il était une fois, j'aime Genève, de novembre 2022. Cette cinquième édition de J'aime Genève m'a enchantée, sous le signe du dialogue entre les exposants et les organisateurs, entre la joaillerie d'hier et les créateurs de demain, entre les gemmes de toujours et les montures intemporelles. Alors je vous partage mes découvertes à travers les paroles des acteurs de la joaillerie et des pierres précieuses que j'y ai rencontrées. C'est parti pour une saison capsule de 8 épisodes Hello everyone, I'm Wallace Hong. I'm from China originally and I'm based in Spain. I was really uh, appreciated to be discovered by Nadesh. I think it's the moment for me to show my art to the world. Your art, I really specifically because you work with Titan. Yes, I work with Titanic and all the work it's made by hand and the new technique that I'm using is directly sculpting in the titanium metal base so there's no 3D casting 3D printing or any wax casting it's directly manually sculpt just to make one and I remember you tell me uh, your technique was inspired by antique techniques yes I inspired by many different kind of Uh, fields of art and different kind of techniques. I always seek because when I decided to be a designer, just ask myself if I'm not professional, how can I make sure that I can be the one? I can be special. So, uh, also, I didn't learn professionally. Or I was crazy looking for answers and then my inner answer is learn see the things that people had never seen. So I study many different things, for example, marketing, advertising, branding, marketing, and, and so many things and in inter international sh trade, for example, and different kind of, uh, of the crystal, of the goldsmith. I can have inspiration. My best teacher is nature, and I think it's coming for me because of When I was a kid, I, was, I had an unusual childhood. So every day I wake up, it's like in a new adventure with a, just a small river and mountains, just me with my mom, me and my mom. And I still remember that day when I chased a butterfly near the field. I, I just shocked by one butterfly flew out directly from the water cave. Really, really massive butterfly. I had never seen something like that. And the water were in the wings of the butterfly and the sun were reflected and just feels like that moment is like magical and water had the color and the reflection like just like the James stones. But people say your pieces are really poetic because, for example, you make a butterfly, but you say, I want the people imagine what you want, like, for example, coral or everything else. So each piece is are several life. Yes, it's very different because that's how I want, because I think every one of us is very unique, just like my Jews. Every one of us, we have different versions of life or different version of how we feel and seeing things. So I would like every different person when they see my work, they can connect, they can have some different connections, they can feel how they feel and see the things how they see. So some people, they might see my butterfly as a cora, and some people they might see as a water butterfly or as a just water splashes. And after you told them it's an abstract butterfly, then they realize it's a butterfly. So I would like them to, different people have different connections. If I can make a wish for you, what do you like I wish for you? I will wi I would like you to wish me to be able to continue to create as much as beautiful art as I can and to be continually to be seen.
The name of my brand is uh, Toji Jewelry. Toji means crown from Persian language. I'm coming from gemstone dealer's family. Uh, basically, my dad is dealing with gemstones and I've been working almost eight years in gemstone business. That's why I got passion in gemstones. So in my jewelry, I'm concentrating on the gemstones mostly. And I'm trying to, like, I'm inspired by everything, like by nature, by feelings. Honestly, I don't have any artistic, like, background. I was not studying art and I think if I were doing art I would do abstract because all my jewelry is like different style I just try to express whatever I see around me I concentrate on the color of gemstone whatever I felt I want people to see the piece and feel like what I wanted to tell them with the colors with the shapes and everything I'm trying to find high quality manufacturers so all our jewelry are in high quality and I do capsule collections so we don't have any people pieces that are unique piece nothing in this like world has a duplicate so we like there is no flower which is the same as the other one everything is unique so that's what I'm trying to show in my jewelry and there is never the same emotion that we feel it's always different so I don't like to duplicate and make like many pieces in the same style or something and also because I'm dealing with color gemstone it's impossible to do that in colors because all the colors are different and you can never find like similar even matching pairs sometimes are slightly different in colors I'm very happy to be a gem genie. Before I was um, mixing it with my dad's uh, gemstones, you know, and it's my very, very first time at gem genie uh, when I'm presenting my jewelry in separated booth in designer area. So I'm honored to be here. And um, yeah. In all your jewel, I notice a really nice ring. And the stone is gray. Actually, yes, uh, you're right. It's gray sometimes and sometimes it's lavender. So that's the interesting part about this stone. It's like ice, you know, you can have like different shade of ice depending on what uh, clothes you wear. So the same with this stone. Sometimes it appears to be gray, sometimes lavender. And that's what I like about it. It's very special. So it depends on your feeling, on your mood. <laughs> it's a 17 carats lavender spinel. And I tried to make a very simple design, like you've seen, like not many diamonds, very simple ring, because the stone itself is very beautiful. I didn't want to disturb the, the beauty of the stone with the extra things. And I noticed several other jewels and they are pink. Those necklaces are made with pink spinels that are coming from Tajikistan, from a very famous Kuilal mine. Actually, me, myself, uh, I'm half Tajik. My dad is from Tajikistan. So I, I really have a special feeling about these stones because I believe that like my ancestors are from there. So I really have a very good feeling. I can feel that those stones give me some energy. So I like to work with them. And nowadays, there are not many in the market because the mine is um, not anymore giving any production. Those are beads, so I tried to add some sparkle with diamonds like hoops in the middle and then keep the gems by themselves <laughs> to separate the color. You're right. Hi, Mr. Thomas Leiser. I come from Germany, from Ida Oberstein, the center of gemstone cutting and producing of jewelry. Parvaiba is really specific gem. It's a stone, which is a gemstone, which has been found about 15 years ago, the first time in Brazil. And nowadays you find it also in Nigeria and in Mozambique. The speciality of this stone is that it has a certain kind of fluorescence. It means it, it has a lightning in the dawn or the lightning in the dusk. So it means that when other kind of stones are not any more visible, you still have with the Paraiba a stone which is lightning. It's not lightning like a real light. It's a kind of lightning. And if you are sitting, let's say, in a restaurant where the light is not so perfect and you have your hand on your table and you are eating something and someone is wearing a ring with a paraiba, it will be still visible. And other kind of stone like ruby, sapphire, emeralds are more or less dark and you can't see them. But the paraiba is lightning and that is the speciality of that stone. For your jewels, you have another speciality, jewels moving. Correct. I have done one kind of ring, a ring which is moving. If you turn it, it's a spinning, which affects. It is spinning not just a little bit. It spins really a hundred times round. If you just give him a little bit of push, it will go round, spinning around. 
smooth because the technique on it is made, I don't know the right word in English, but it's like if you have a tool inside with small, very small, tiny beads, and these small, tiny beads, we call it a German Kugellager. It's a kind of movement which makes things going around, and that is what I have produced in that ring. So it's not just a, a slightening, it's a moving above small round beads. And you have another jewel. It was a pendant, and you can change in ring, but at the beginning, yes, the necklace. Correct. I have made a nice part of jewelry, which you have a flexible choice. You can either wear this as a ring, and uh, you can take the top of the ring easily off the shrink, you take it and you just put it on a necklace. So you have a pendant on a necklace or you have a ring. So you have a multiple choice. And that is what I did. Both is, is protected. So it's not that it's possible that it's somehow you can lose it, it's protected. It's not visible because I did that underneath the top of the ring. So you see nothing, so I hide it behind the top. So this is uh, the same with the pendant. You don't see that this is put together. Somehow it looks like it is one piece. Also, you can play with your jewel. That's the idea behind it. Je remercie chaleureusement le Salon Gem Genève de son partenariat qui m'a permis, comme les visiteurs venus de 70 pays, de plonger dans ce qu'il y a de plus beau hier comme aujourd'hui en joaillerie. Bien sûr, pour vivre les conférences, les dédicaces, les workshops, il faudra venir en mai. Je suis Anne Desmarais de Jotan et je donne une voix aux bijoux. Et si vous aussi vous avez envie de faire parler vos bijoux et votre maison, je serai ravie de vous accompagner pour réaliser votre podcast de marque ou vous accueillir en partenaire dans mes podcasts de natifs. Cette saison capsule est particulière car elle crée un reportage en plusieurs épisodes. Les huit émissions de ce podcast « Le bijou comme un bisou » succède à l'interview de Vivienne Becker dans le podcast « Brillante » et précède de quelque temps celle d'Alice Minter, ce qui vous offre plusieurs possibilités d'entendre les points forts de « J'aime Genève ». Faites-moi plaisir, abonnez-vous à ces podcasts et partagez vos épisodes préférés sur les réseaux sociaux. À tout bientôt en 2023 et bisous comme un bijou <rire>